Okay, this is Movie Dash Cam. Let's get right into it. Today we're in West Islip, Long Island. This is in Suffolk County. And we will be visiting Carmine Fatico's house. I might be pronouncing that name wrong. I do not want to hear about it in the comments, everybody. Um, all right, so his nickname was Charlie Wagons because he would he was known to hijack cargo trucks. So I guess they would call him Wagons. I'm not sure. He was around a long time, so. Um, we are going to his house, like I said. It is at 810 Higby Lane. We're a few blocks away from there now. His brother was involved in a lot of the stuff that he did. His brother's name was Danny Fatico, also known as Danny Wagons. Like I said, he was involved in a lot of the stuff he was involved in. Now, Carmine was a Gambino captain. Capo regime, if you want to go by what the mafia actually called them. And... Let me get my bearings here a little bit. Yeah, so he was the Capo regime in the Gambinos very early on. I mean, he was around so long that in 1952, when John Gotti was 12 years old, he worked as an errand boy in Carmine's East New York social club. Kind of crazy. And then he moved to West Islip in the 60s, in the early 60s, and he tried to strong arm his way into the Long Island, Long Island Painters Union, one of them, I'm sure there's a few. Uh, one of the ways he tried to strong arm his way in was having a union official beaten to get the point across. Uh, the suspect in the assault was Louis Mara, also known as Louis the Mole. He uh, was a Colombo associate. I'll add his picture off my horse like I always do. We gotta make the next right turn we can. And then in the mid-60s, he was under serious heat by law enforcement and got indicted for attempted murder of an East Rockaway business owner. The reason why he almost killed this guy is because the guy complained to Carmine about how Carmine robbed his warehouse of $185,000 worth of, um, I think it was air conditioning equipment. Today, that would be $1.5 million worth of stuff. So the guy rightfully complained, you know, but that gets you beaten half to death in, uh, in the eyes of Carmine. And I'm just going to run over his, eh, I'll, I'll save his arrest record for later. So by the 60s, Carmine had a crew of about 120 men of all ranks of the mafia, you know, uh, going back and forth from captains to just foot shoulders, street level guys. The stuff that his crew was involved in, they, uh, were, now, they in 1972, they moved from East New York to Ozone Park, which we all know now as the famous Bergen Hunt and Fish Club, which I do have a video on that, uh, along with a video on John Gotti, I'll put that in the video here, and so yeah, he moved to there. The reason why he was over there was because he was closer to JFK, where a lot of cargo stuff was going on. So they hijacked a lot of JFK cargo. Um, they sold stolen merchandise, loan sharking, bookmaking, number running, which is the same thing really. Um, floating dice games, not exactly sure what that means. Illegal casinos and sports betting. It was estimated that the crew made about $30 million a year. Those are like unheard of numbers. Now, Carmine was known, not known as like the physically, uh, he wasn't an intimidating dude in that fashion. He was more of the smarts and he knew how to make a lot of money quick for the mafia, which kept him around for a long time. But that doesn't mean that he wasn't ruthless when he needed to be. He was a, he was a crazy dude. Now, in the 70s, Carmine and his crew were indicted on stealing 98 mailbags containing $3 million worth of cash and securities equal to about $20 million today. The charges also included the theft of fur coats, um, all from an Air France flight. Now, Carmine pled guilty to the fur coats and got five years just so he didn't get um, go to trial for the other stuff and end up getting longer. And he left his operations to John Gotti and uh, shortly after, he, like, semi-retired and left everything to Gotti. But before all that, in 1972, 1972 was when he moved to Ozone Park, which I, I believe I mentioned that. All right, we're about a block or two away here. 
Also on May 23rd, 1972, Carmine was indicted on loan sharking and conspiracy charges. Then in 1973, he was indicted again on a new set of loan sharking charges. And yeah, when he moved to Ozone Park to the Bergen Hunt Fish, Fish Club, which he bought and named, um, he put Gotti in charge of all of his illegal gambling going on in Eastern New York. He liked that Gotti was very good at getting uh, the money they were owed. We're pulling up to the house here, and while we're pulling up to the house, I will rattle off his arrest record, which is pretty impressive if you're trying to trying to have a competition with, with some people. Honestly, if you're having trying to have a competition with anyone else that was in the Mafia. This right here is his house. Right here with the two pillars. Tan house. So his arrest record were five assaults in total. Uh, grand larceny, burglary, possession of burglar tools, making a false statement, dice games, robbery twice, bookmaking twice, Disorderly conduct twice, conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy, loan sharking, extortion, and fleeing the scene of an accident. Uh, and he only served one jail term for the grand larceny for the fur coats. Pretty incredible. Now in 2018, there was a book that was made about him. Carmine, Charlie Wagons, Fatico, West Islip, New York, Gambino, Capo Regime. He died August 1st, 1991 at 81 years old of natural causes. Uh, he's buried in St. John's Cemetery in Middle Village, Queens. And I'm going to do a nice U-turn here so we can really get a good look at the house. <clears throat> Or three-point turn this truck I don't this truck needs about a an airport landing strip to make a, a, a true u-turn so so this is the house I'm sure it didn't look like this I'll try and find pictures of when he lived in it but um it was difficult for me to even find the address of the house so all right and that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about him and his neighborhood that he's in. Uh, I appreciate you watching. See you in the next one.